Welcome, everyone. My name is Sawyer Balak, and I'm here at the Oncology Brothers event, Advances in Oncology. And I'm super excited today because we're going to be talking about the updates of the cabinet trial that were recently presented at ASCO GI. I'm actually joined today by one of the investigators from the cabinet trial. If you can just introduce yourself for everyone. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Nina Vichevergia. I am a GI medical oncologist at Fox Chase Cancer Center in Philadelphia. And I had the proud privilege of being one of the investigators on the cabinet trial. So I'm excited about this new option for our patients. Awesome. So let's dive into it with the first question. Can you briefly highlight some of the key findings from the cabinet trial? And how do these findings impact treatment landscape for individuals with previously treated advanced uh, GI neurotic and tumors? Absolutely. So just to give you all a background, you know, cabinet trial compared cabozantinib, a, you know, um, a very famous drug that we use otherwise in many different cancers compared to placebo in patients with pancreatic and extra pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. We included patients with lung, GI primary, pancreas primaries, and they included patients with all grades of grade one, two, and three in it, but they had to be neuroendocrine tumors. And they compared the two, they, they had two cohorts, the EP nets and the pancreatic nets. And we saw how the drug worked in these diseases and and in both, in both actually cohorts, it improved the progression-free survival with compared to placebo. This was in patients who had been on one prior line of therapy at least. Majority of these patients had actually had three or more prior line of therapies. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, and considering the broad potential uh, benefit of capozidatinib across factors like tumor grade, functional status, primary site, and prior therapies, how do you envision integrating this treatment into clinical practice? And also, in particular, for... What are you analyzing for patient characteristics um, when you decide to prioritize capozatinib in tomorrow's practice? Yeah, so, you know, I think we are, um, for neuroendocrine tumors, now we have a few different options in front of us. You have um, PRRT, you have the option of doing everolimus, and now we have chemotherapy for pancreatic nets, and now it's another option, this is capozantinib. We are hoping that the FDA will approve it soon so we can start using it in our patients. But basically, this drug works for different kinds of neuroendocrine tumors, regardless of their primary site, regardless of their, you know, the grade of the disease, one, two, or three. So it has a very broad spectrum ability to work. And I really think that is like the key thing in this disease. And the key thing with this drug is it works for all patients and has a really nice new option for all our patients with pancreatic and extra pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. You know, I really think about using this drug in patients who have... Um, probably had one prior line of therapy before this. That's where like NCCN has sort of endorsed its use too very recently. But um, other than that, I, you know, for patients who are, you know, SSCR negative, I tend to use it, you know, as a probably a frontline therapy too. But for the most part, at this point, it's probably used after the frontline setting. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you very much for joining us and highlighting these key findings, these exciting findings that we have and a uh, potential impact on clinical practice will be full. Thank you. I really appreciate the time. It was fun. Thank you. Thanks.